call the January 13th, 2020 Committee of the Whole Meeting to order. The clerk will call the roll. Brereton? Here. Crawford? Here. Frank? Here. Freeman? Here. McGee? Here. Porter? Here. Radcliffe? Here. Snow? Here. Stevens? Here. Nine present? Thank you. Um, we have a little bit different format tonight. We're on our committee, the whole meeting, and then we'll have a special meeting directly following that to deal with the, the main issue. Under public comment, public forum, we have nothing this evening under reports, officers, boards, and special committees. We have ordinance 4AH, an ordinance granting a special use to amend a plan development within the planned industrial district at 1050 ECS Way. This was requested to go back to committee. We are now back at committee. So we'll, any discussion anyone wants to bring forward this evening? Yes, Alderman Stevens. What is it they're wanting to change other than hours of operation or anything? Is that it? I'm sorry? Was this for the, the quarry? With the it was. Okay, is this the only, all they're looking for is a change in their operating hours or what are they looking for? Just a change in the operating hours. For the batch plant only, not the actual quarry. Okay. Additional questions or comments concerning the item that we're speaking about? The committee recall it. This is actually okay. sitting at council. It's already on the agenda for council later on this evening, but it was referred to committee for any questions. So having none, I'll entertain another motion to refer it back to council. Motion by Alderman Snow. I'll have a second. Alderman Porter. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. It's referred to council for final disposition. Under building, planning, and zoning, new business, we have none. Under public works, unfinished business, we have none. Under public works, new business, we have the proposed 2020 MFT street maintenance program. Director Anderson, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in your packets is the proposed list of street overlays for our MFT program for this year. Uh, note in the memo um, that uh, with the uh, state recently increasing the MFT, the, the gas tax uh, throughout the state, uh, and the city does get, a, get uh, see some increased revenues from that increase. Um, and our share is projecting out to be um, about $420,000 a year. Um, so you'll notice on our overlay program for this year, where we're normally doing around the $400,000 mark to $500,000, we're up to a little over $900,000 this year. So again, this is to get this street list out in front of you. If you've got any questions, concerns, comments, please let me know. And we'll be back on the agenda in February for uh, approval. Okay. Next up under number five, we have under A, the Public Safety Building Email Consolidation. Attorney Grillen. Sure. There was a somewhat lengthy memo in your packets regarding this issue. Um, the upshot is this. Our email server, and the server is actually a piece of software, uh, is out of license as of this, well, it'll actually be this summer. Um, originally it was supposed to be in February and Microsoft pushed that date back a little bit further as they like to do. Which would require us to buy a whole new email server, um, which of course is a piece of software. The unfortunate part is even if we did that in exorbitant price, we'd have to buy a whole new piece of hardware because the new server won't run our new our existing hardware. At any rate, if we were to try and keep our email system in house, you're looking at an excess of $13,000 as a lump sum upfront payment plus the annualized payments to keep that going. Um, that does not include the cost of something called an archiver, which is the means that you can take emails, put them on a, a separate piece of hardware, which is completely searchable so that we could facilitate FOIA requests easily. And we should be having that. Best practice would be to have that. We've never had that. So we're looking at a significantly large cost to keep email in house. Uh, given that, for about the last year, we've been looking at other alternatives, one of which was to get rid of our email server altogether, move into the cloud completely with Microsoft. Uh, they have a product called Microsoft 365. If we were to go that route, Microsoft wanted about $15 per month per user. 
In addition, we received a quote to move all of our existing email up to the cloud of about $10,000. Again, not cost effective. <coughs> um, in talking with the sheriff's office, they have actually offered to host our emails on their server, on their email server. We'd be able to keep all our existing domain, so nothing would actually change from a outside point of view. Um, and frankly, the cost, they would charge approximately 25% of the cost of their hardware and software because we'd be 25% of the users on their system. It would run about $840 per year, a lot cheaper than our other alternatives. Um, that does not include the individual licensing fees, um, which are a one-time cost, uh, but we have to pay those anyway for each user within the city, so that's cost neutral. It's the same price. So the recommendation is actually to move the city's existing email system for administrative staff uh, to the public safety building uh, email server and allow them to host our email services. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. A motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Frank. Further questions or comments concerning motion now on the floor? I would make one other comment. The one thing that drives most of you most nuts with our email system is the need to consistently change your password. That might go away. <laughs> Yay. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval. Signal probably saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, I take that as unanimous. I'll be forward to City Council for further disposition. Next up under B, we reopen the discussion on cannabis and the cannabis tax and request for the attorney to create an ordinance, Alderman Crawford. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion, then I'd like to speak. Um, I'd like to make a motion to prohibit the sale of cannabis in the city of Belvedere. I have a motion on the floor. I have a second. Additional questions or comments? Alderman Crawford, you asked to speak first. Yeah, um, I believe the reason we have um, department heads is for their expertise, like Becky and Brent and Kip and uh, the fire chief, the police chief, Gina. And um, I actually was forward at first, but I, I changed my mind because I, I know the uh, chief police did his due diligence. And I believe what he said. I think it'll make it worse in the town, and I don't think we need something like that. And I'm actually asking my colleagues to go along with it. We could try. We could try it maybe later on. And I'm especially asking my. Um, I'm uh, chairman of the pub uh, public safety. I'm asking the vice chairman, Alderman Burton, to maybe vote with me because he's uh, vice chairman of public safety. Questions or comments concerning uh, the motion on the floor? Yes, Alderman Freeman. So I'd like to know, like, how many times is this going to come up for a revote, revote, revote? Like, I believe this is like the third time we've voted on this, and it's already passed twice. So can somebody just keep putting this on the agenda, like every month, or what the heck? It's an excellent question. Um, to which there's no real good answer. There is a clause governing your city council rules that a motion that's been passed and reconsidered shall not be reconsidered thereafter. However, this hasn't been in city council yet. And even with that clause within your city council uh, regulations, to me that actually pertains simply to that original motion being reconsidered. In other words, you pass an ordinance, let's say, to set a new speed limit of 40 miles an hour on Logan Avenue. While that motion is paying for a city council, you can't keep reconsidering it if it passes. That would not, in my opinion, prevent a city, an alderman, to come back to the committee of the whole two, three months later and make a motion to change that speed limit again. Because to have that, and be a committee of the whole at that point, to not allow a council to actually do that would effectively mean you cannot change uh, an ordinance ever in the future. And obviously, this council has the right to amend its ordinances has the right to amend the city code in the future. That'd be the same thing as saying that you don't allow, for example, cannabis at this point, but next year you decide to. Of course, you could at that time introduce a, a motion in Committee of the Whole to pass an ordinance to do that. So 
Right now, we're committed to the whole. No, there is not, in my opinion, necessarily a, anything that stops an alderman for presenting a motion to prohibit. Alderman Burke. I don't understand why we want to ban something that's perfectly legal. It makes no sense. Alderman Crawford. Well, <clears throat> I went to visit my uh, family for Christmas and uh, New Year's, and um, I ended up going to Vegas for my sons. He had a like a wedding party, so I went uh, with them to Vegas, and they have at the dispensaries all along the streets. And this one street I was on, all uh, people had all their kids out there, and um, that's all you smelt was uh, the marijuana. And I believe, I believe, even though it's legal in Illinois, but it's not legal to smoke it out on the street. I believe when you bring a dispensary in the town and that, the people will smoke it anyway because we brought the stores in. Alderman Freeman. So, I'm sorry, Alderman Crawford, but that's the equivalent of saying that because we have a bar in Belvedere and it's illegal to consume that alcohol outside the bar on the street, that people are just going to do it anyway. I'm just giving you my opinion. Alderman Snow. Well, it may be legal, doesn't make it right. Um, the, and even for the states that have legalized it, there appears to be a lot of issues. And many people who voted yes are not big fans of it and wish they hadn't voted for it. We, on the other hand, did not have it as electric electoral people to vote on it. The um, state legislature took it upon themselves, the only state to do so. Um, and Illinois is not noted for making sound decisions. Um, so I don't think just because the state legislature, which inherently makes poor decisions, that we should just follow suit and I think as a community of people who care and the people I talk to are not in favor of us allowing it and they're not in favor of the state allowing it. So I've yet to come across anybody um, right off hand that I've encountered that's all gun ho for it. Anybody else? Um, just an observation. Um, you know, up front, I didn't want us to have a dispensary. We have to obey the state law, so we'll obey the state law. Um, my wife and I are fond of going to Mary's Market for brunch on Sundays. And I will tell you that the first Sunday that Sunnyside was open, er, all the parking lots along the Farland there had private security because nobody wants the crowds parking in their parking lots. They're bringing people in on shuttle buses. Um, it has continued, and every day that they're open, there's a big line for people to get in there. From what I've read, that typically has a, you know, it's like anything else new, it, it peaks and then it, it falls off. In the Register Star this morning, there was a gentleman who is a professor at uh, NIU that made some observations uh, about the states that have passed this, and one thing stuck in my mind, because I'm involved with a uh, community Action Agency and the, the poverty programs that, that we work together on regionally is that this is really a regressive tax because the majority of people who are buying pot and who are smoking pot are of low income and it, that struck me. Um, I hadn't thought of it in, in that aspect. I still don't think we need a dispensary. I don't know where, particularly if we don't control where it goes in the city specifically and have strong uh, rules as to setbacks and so forth. Um, I don't know if we get people coming over from uh, north of us, which I, I think will probably happen. I don't think we're going to get the Rockford people coming over here, but I think we'll get some people from over the state line. What it's going to do in terms of tying up other business parking spots downtown, I will tell you this, people along the Farland Road in Rockford are not happy at all with how it's affected their business. They have to have private security out there to keep people who are going to Sunnyside from parking in their lots. So uh, I just thought that was an 
an observation I wanted to share with you. Chief Woody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, in respect to it being legal, uh, there's a, a lot of things uh, like alcohol, like hydrocodone, oxycontin, cigarettes, they're all legal that were presented to be safe, uh, at least initially. And it took uh, years and sometimes decades before um, either the companies or the government was, was honest with us. And we really realized just how harmful it was to our citizens. And I guess that's kind of my concern is that by having the dispensary, it's sending the message that it's not only safe, uh, but you know, um, something that's good for our community. And uh, I absolutely oppose uh, uh, either of those sentiments. And you know, we, uh, because uh, uh, I've had the opportunity to go some trainings uh, regarding the new cannabis statute, and done some independent research on my own. I'd be happy to bring some of that information back at a uh, uh, committee level or council and hopefully help the council uh, make a better informed decision if that's uh, what the uh, alderman would like. Alderman Freeman. So regards to bringing people here, I think that's a good thing. Like why would we not want people to come to Belvedere from north, south, east, or west it only, you know, downtown, it only brings more people. Maybe they'll go have breakfast at the steam plant or lunch at the firebox or, you know, go over to Mr. Thornton's um, shop and buy some things. Why would, we, why would we not want people to come here? I would agree with that sentiment. However, the sentiment expressed from the folks along McFarland Road is that they don't come to their stores, they don't come to the restaurants. They don't, and there's a lot of fast food restaurants as well as nicer restaurants there, and that's not been their experience. I, I would say this. So it's legal, and we're going to abide by the state law. Uh, we don't even know, it may be a couple of years before they grant licensing at Boone County. And so I, I don't, I think it might be a wise thing to wait and see how this plays out uh, in Winnebago County and in Beloit with South Beloit with what they're doing and then we can always decide to sit down in council again at Committee of the Whole and propose to have a dispensary. I don't think it, it hurts anything to, to have a wait and see attitude because I think there are mixed opinions certainly on the council and certainly and I would agree with Mr. Snow. Um, I've talked to very few people in fact my phone at home has been ringing about people who just are not in favor of having a dispensary. They're aghast at the law to begin with. Uh, they see it just as another tax maneuver by the state to raise tax, which, okay, I get that. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we've discussed this and everybody is, is certainly welcome to their opinion. And I just will stand with the chief and say, you know, I don't think we need to have a dispensary here. if. Yeah, everything works out fine in Winnebago County and statewide with the places that are already distributing uh, and doesn't create a negative environment with the rest of the retail community and so forth, then we can always reconsider it. I'm important. Yeah, also just consider, look what's happening with vaping now. They're, this vaping was thought to be a safer alternative to smoking and now we're finding out that it's causing some pretty major problems. Alderman Barrett, did you have additional comments? Yeah, so we're looking ways to raise money we're just gonna say no to this three percent tax so uh, it makes no sense Alderman Crawford. but we were looking to raise money be even before this and nobody would do it they raised two cents for uh, gasoline and just uh, when they could raise that 15 cents a gallon well I, I understand your point we voted down minute levy increases the last two years which would have helped us more than this tax is going to help us but again that remains to, to be seen in, in the future um, I will tell you that I went to a, a presentation with a workforce connection that was put on by RBC and uh, Jim Paragis uh, who is a very well respected attorney in Rockford and who has been the foremost attorney to analyze and share uh, this 600 page 
law and then the 400 page addendum to that law and his very first statement when he stepped up to the podium to make his presentation was do not misunderstand this is a tax instrument for the state of Illinois so to your point yes it'll raise money I've said this before and, and I'll repeat it I think it's a sad society where we use sin taxes to raise money to pay for streets I think we've got it backwards and I agree with the chief so anybody else we have a motion and a second and the motion would you repeat the motion yeah the, uh, the motion was to prohibit the sale of cannabis in the city of Belvedere all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed no. no okay roll call vote Brereton no Crawford aye Frank? No. Freeman? No. McGee? No. Porter? Aye. Radcliffe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? No. Four in favor? Okay, motion is lost. Mr. Mayor, you also have on the agenda tonight the cannabis tax? Yes. So would you like to speak to that? Also on the agenda and in your packets was a proposed tax on the sale of cannabis. You'll recall, um, and Alderman Freeman's right, this has been talked about quite a bit over the last two or three months. Um, but a previous committee of the whole forwarded to city council the direction for the city attorney to draft a tax on the sale of cannabis and for the city attorney and the planner to process a text amendment uh, with respect to where the cannabis could be sold or uh, grown and produced. Um, that text amendment goes to planning and zoning tomorrow night. It uh, comes back to you for first, first uh, reading uh, at the next city council meeting after today. So I thought it appropriate to introduce for committee today the, ta the tax portion of it so that when the text amendment comes to you, you'll have both the text amendment and the tax before you in lockstep. Um, the tax proposed Quite frankly, this ordinance is based upon the uh, ordinance that the IML created. I made a couple of small modifications, but we're basically very similar to all the other municipalities are doing, which will make it easier for the industry to understand uh, exactly what we're doing. It does impose the 3% uh, tax on the gross receipts from sales of cannabis within the city of Belvedere. It provides the Department of Revenue will collect that tax on behalf of the city, which is what the statute authorizes. The recommendation would be to forward uh, Article 11, Municipal Cannabis Retailers Occupation Tax, to the City Council in ordinance form. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Motion by Alderman Brereton. Second. Alderman McGee. Further questions or comments? Alderman Snow. Again, not in favor of this whole uh, cannabis thing. and. While I could uh, make the symbolic no vote um, for this, um, I'm not going to because if we're going to have it, we might as well tax it. But not a fan of the whole cannabis thing and uh, just wanted to voice that opinion again. Anyone else? Alderman Porter. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with uh, Alderman Snow on that one. I'm not for the whole thing, but if we're going to do it, then we might as well tax it. Okay, anybody else? All those in favor of approval of motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously and forward to City Council for final disposition, which brings us to the end of this agenda this evening. So I'll entertain a motion for adjournment of this agenda. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Uh, second. Second by Alderman Ratcliffe. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now adjourned. So I guess I'll go through all of this again. I call the Belvedere City Council special meeting to order for January 13th, 2020. The clerk will call the roll. Brereton? Here. Crawford? Here. Frank? Here. Freeman? Here. McGee? Here. Porter? Here. Radcliffe? Here. Snow? Here. Stevens? Here. Nine present. 
stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, as we gather this evening, help us to make wise decisions with the trust of our citizens. Help us to be polite and considerate of one another. Help us to always remember that we serve the entire community and keep us from the vanity of making decisions based on our own personal agendas, on one political party, on political cronies, on special interests. Let us rise above the nasty politics of the time and be one as a council serving our city. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, under public comment, we have no one registered to talk this evening under unfinished business. Under item A, ordinance 480H, second reading, it's an ordinance granting a special use to amend a planned development with the planned industrial district at 1050 ECS Way. Entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. motion by Crawford, second by Snow. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Radcliffe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Nine in favor? Ordinance 48H is approved unanimously. Yay. Next brings us up adjournment. I'll entertain a motion I'll to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Motion by Crawford, second by Snell. Questions or comments about adjourning? Good. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.